Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to this week's segment of Live Without Limits. Today's show is titled The Prosecutor's Method of Marketing Funnel Construction. And what we're talking about when we're talking about marketing funnel construction is putting together a package of marketing tools that include things like an autoresponder, and sales letters and, and, and making them enticing. But how do you do it in a way that you can get your customers to open up the emails? The prosecutor who is supposed to carry the burden of proof really is an author, says Scott Thoreau. How do I know what things to say and in what order to say them in my marketing funnel? It's a question I'm asked at least once a week. And while I can't give you specifics, since each niche market, product, service, and so on is different, I can tell you a simple way to think about the construction of your marketing funnel message. And I call it simply the prosecutor's method of a marketing funnel construction. As a fan of real crime stories and high-profile court cases, I've always enjoyed watching a good prosecutor in action, seeing how, from the beginning, they methodically lay out a cogent and persuasive argument of guilt in just a beautiful day, one block at a time, in logical order, in proof upon proof, building an undeniable case against the defendant. In the end, leaving the jury with no other plausible position to take other than one of guilty. If we boil down the essence of an effective message, Within a marketing funnel, we'll find something very similar, an undeniable, logical, and emotional argument established by a string of assertions and claims that each backed by a preponderance of proof. In in other words, laying out the message of your marketing funnel is very similar to what a prosecutor does when laying out the message of their case. And one of the things I'm going to back up here, and I'm going to talk about something that happened recently. I got a call, I think, Thursday from someone telling telling me that I signed up on some website for something And actually, they got the name wrong because they were looking for a man and not a woman, okay? First thing, they made a mistake. And what was the product they were selling me? A patch to lose weight. And you get it for free, but you only pay $9.98 for shipping. Well, if you have a patch and then they're giving you some bottle of some kind of vitamins that are supposed to help you lose one pound a day and you only get five patches and you wear each patch for three days either on your inner arm or your inner thigh and you rotate it. Now, 
how is that going to and then she went through her spiel and then she was ready to put it on the credit card and I'm like no I don't have a credit card and, and anyway so then later I called back because I was curious about what this was all about and according to him when you wear the patch for three days it's supposed to help you lose weight because it doesn't have caffeine in it it doesn't have certain things whatever but it's supposed to help you lose the weight. Then there was some some kind of other bottle that they were sending you included with the five patches. Now the five patches are you wear each patch for three days or five so that's two weeks worth of patches that you're supposed to lose about twenty pounds at the end of two weeks. And when I asked him, Well, what happens to the skin that when you start losing that weight? Oh, it shrinks it. Now, let me tell you something. The only way to tighten up muscles is exercise. And when they when he when he started answering my questions, the the things that he was saying, it was just turning me off more and more to the product because I could tell it was a scam. Because first of all, the only way you lose weight is through eating a balanced diet and exercise. And once your skin is stretched, it hangs loose. That's why when people who are grossly overweight lose weight, they almost have to have that skin removed or tightened up or something to surgically. There's no way that it's going to shrink back to its original size. And the sad part is, is you're going to have some people that they really think that this patch is going to do for them what these people are projecting it will do. So remember that when you're putting together a funnel, a sales funnel, you have to literally have proof that what you're offering people, because when I when he, when he said 20 pounds, and I said, well, what if I had... As, you know, and I made the remark to him, well, then if I have to lose more weight, I have to buy more and pay for it, right? And he says, well, of course. Well, and it's like, oh, they, ha- they, they how does he know it works? Because no one has called him back. Well, how would you know? You're only the salesperson that does the outbound calls. You don't know who's been calling back in and returning the product or complaining because that's not told to you. So remember, when you're putting together a a sales funnel, you need to have proof because that's why it's basically called the prosecutor's method because when a prosecutor puts, lays out its case, they have facts to back up everything they're saying. A prosecutor constructs their opening remarks, entire line of questioning, and closing argument to establish certain beliefs in the mind of the jury members with the ultimate belief in corresponding conclusion, hopefully being guilty. You must do the same. Only in your case, the ultimate belief you want to establish And the mind of the prospect is, the best thing I can do right now is buy this. To do that, you must first answer this question. What does the prospect need to believe at the end of my marketing funnel to buy? Answering the question is essential since the entire message of your marketing funnel is then going to be engineered to establish those beliefs in the mind of your prospect. Next, you must lay out the order in which those beliefs need to be established. In other words, which beliefs need to come before other beliefs, and so on in the mind of your prospect. For instance, 
let's say you were selling a Facebook advertising course to local pizzerias. Well, before we establish the belief in the mind that Facebook advertising is the easiest and best paid traffic platform for them to use, we would first need to establish the belief that their mind that pay the traffic is better than free traffic. That belief needs to come first. If it doesn't, they may, in fact, believe that Facebook advertising is the easiest paid traffic platform to use, but the paid traffic is generally isn't as effective as free traffic. You see what I'm saying? Once you know what beliefs the prospect needs to have at the end of the funnel to buy and the logical order, those beliefs need to be established in the mind of your prospect. The next step is to begin crafting the skeleton of your actual marketing funnel message. To do this, you'll begin by laying out the different statements and claims that you'll need to present throughout your funnel to establish each belief in the mind of your prospect. Simply put, what are you going to say, claim, or assert for each thing you want the prospect to believe? For instance, using our prior Facebook advertising example, maybe I need the prospect to believe that they'll have an easier time getting started with Facebook advertising than any other paid traffic platform. So what could I say to begin to establish the belief in their mind? Let's keep it really simple and say, the Facebook advertising platform is easier to use than any other paid traffic platform available right now. So no matter what your skill level is with the computer or the Internet is right, now you'll be able to use Facebook advertising to start driving qualified traffic and leads to your website. Now, here's the key. Just like a prosecutor must present a preponderance of proof throughout the presentation of their case, so must you throughout your marketing funnel message. More specifically, for every statement, claim, or assertion you make in your marketing funnel in an attempt to establish one of the necessary beliefs in the mind of your prospect, you must back it up with one or more proof points. Proof in the form of factual, social, and anecdotal proof is at the bedrock of every truly persuasive marketing message. It's the proof that makes your message credible and believable. Without proof, all you're doing is making claims, claims that prospects will be naturally skeptical of. Now, remember I was just talking about the weight loss patch? They're basing it on the same prospect or similarity to the cessation of smoking that they use the patch for. But you know what? I've known people who have that patch for smoking, and you know what? They still smoke. It did not help them stop smoking. And yet, they want you to believe that using a patch to lose weight is going to help you lose a pound a day and also tighten up your skin without doing anything else. So, just like a prosecutor, 
be sure to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt everything you want the prospect to believe. Finally, once you're confident that you made your case, it's time to present your closing argument. In a marketing funnel, this is when you present the offer and give the call to action. And just like a prosecutor who's led the jury through a persuasive and argumentative proving the guilt of the defendant, you'll lead the prospect to the natural conclusion that your prospect or service is the perfect solution to their problem. Then you wrap up the case. So we've been talking about a marketing funnel, but what is an actual marketing funnel? What is a, a marketing funnel is a sales funnel. And what is a sales funnel? Well, you need to think of some ways to put together a package that actually works. So maybe we need to look at what is a sales funnel. And literally, a sales funnel is something that you use that you're putting together an actual platform of products that you can sell things. So let's look at what is the beginner's guide to a sales funnel. Everyone who has an online business needs to create a sales funnel in order to convert his website visitors into paying customers. And that is what you're doing. So when you're putting together a prosecutor's method, what you're trying to do is set up all the benefits and the reasons why your customer should buy from you. If you fail to do that, you will hardly make any money. Your primary goal with your sales funnel is to move people from one stage to another until they are ready to purchase. And that's the methodical way of using the prosecutor's method. Understanding the sales funnel stages from the first time your prospect hears about you until the moment he buys from you, he passes through different stages of your sales funnel. This journey might differ from one prospect to the next, depending on your buying personas, your niche, and the types of products and services you sell. So you can design your sales funnel with as many stages as you want. But in general, there are the four main ones that you need to pay attention to. They are awareness, interest, decision, and action. Awareness is at this stage the prospect learns about your existing solution, product, or service. He might also become aware of his problem that he needs to solve and the possible ways to deal with it. This is when he visits your website for the first time, which he found from an ad Google search or post shared on social media or another traffic source. Interest. At this stage, the prospect is actually looking for solutions to his problems and ways to achieve his goals. He searches for solutions on Google. This is when you can attract him with some great content. Now is the time when he expresses his interest in your product or service. He follows you on social media and subscribes to your list. Decision. This is the stage 
where the prospect is making the decision that he wants to take advantage of your solution. He's paying more attention to what you offer, including different packages and options, so he can make the final decision to purchase. This is when sales offers are made by using sales pages, webinars, calls, etc. Action. At this stage, the prospect is becoming a customer by finalizing the deal with you. He's signing the contract and clicking the purchase button. Then the money is transferred to your bank account. It's important to state that there might be additional stages to your sales funnel. Your customers might become brand advocates and bring more business that way. At the same time, they might buy again from you and become loyal customers. But to avoid complications and keep things simple, we're going to skip that part of the sales funnel. But it's still important to be aware of the stages that exist. Why are we talking about sales funnels? Because when you have an online business today, having a sales funnel is how you build and market a business today. How to use content for each stage of the sales funnel. According to the Ring DNA, one of the biggest mistakes marketers make is that they don't align their content marketing efforts with their sales funnel stages so that they can close more deals. More often than not, they don't go deep enough. As a result, they fail to move prospects to the next stage. That's the why we have decided to explain how you can use different content for each stage of your sales funnel. Blogging is your way of creating awareness and interest in your product and service and your solution to their problem. It could be your main source of traffic to, for your website, and it's also a good way to engage your list by sharing valuable content. The way you bring awareness by blogging is to optimize your content with the right keywords so that you can attract your target customers from an organic search. Another way is to promote your post on social media by influencing other people to share them and by using promoted posts. It's important to state that blogging is not the bottom line of the funnel activity. In other words, it won't lead to people making a decision to buy from you. For that, you will need to create another type of content or push people to go to the sales call with you. Lead magnets. Any type of local lead magnet is used as a tool to generate interest toward your product. You, you grow your email list by offering something of value to your audience that they're already interested in, such as a guide or a course, anything that can educate your prospects on how they can solve their problems and achieve their goals. And during this time, you can start building the demand for your product. Within the lead magnet itself, you can place call to action or to check out your products and services. Call your sales department. Another way to do it is through webinars. And these, this is when people make decisions and take action. Even though webinars can be used as lead magnets, they're more focused on the decision stage and convincing people to take action by your products. When people sign up for webinars, 
they're already pretty interested in achieving a certain goal or solving a specific problem. This could be growing their traffic, leading or losing weight, or finding the perfect soulmate. Your goal with the webinar is not only to educate them, but to build their demand in order for them to take action. At the end, you should always have a call to action to buy your product, start a free trial, or request a consultation. Videos. Also create awareness, interest, decision, and action. They can be used in pretty much all the stages of the sales funnel. YouTube is well known as the second largest search engine. So by optimizing the videos for certain keywords, you can generate tons of awareness and traffic to your website. Additionally, you can use services like Wistia to embed educational videos within your blog post and your website to educate your audience on topics that interest them. By creating explainer videos, you can build demand for your product and service. Last but not least, with sales videos, you can entice people to make the final step and take action. So, here we are. We've been talking about the prosecutor's method of marketing funnel construction. And then we went through and talked to you about some different ways that you can create interest through webinars, through videos, through blogging, different things that you can help. And one is to create interest. And what you're doing is, is working and making all of these different aspects a part of your marketing funnel. The problem is that for so many people, they don't understand how to use a marketing funnel correctly to build and expand their business, their tools, the things that they need to do to help them create a successful way of growing a business in the long term. And remember, when we're talking about the prosecutor's method, we're talking of laying out your sales funnel in a way that you're leading them by hand one step at a time to making that decision. And that decision is that they will buy your product from you. And you can sign up for coaching and how to build an online business. Because today, no matter what product you're selling, even if you have a brick and mortar store, you need an online website and presence to market your business. Why? Because more and more people are using the Internet to search out products and buy products than they're going into the store. And not only that, the overhead of marketing online is far cheaper than using the old traditional methods. 